Hear now the gospel reading found in the book of Matthew, chapter 14. Immediately, Jesus made the disciples get into a boat and go ahead of them on the other side when he dismissed the crowd. After he had dismissed them, he went up on the mountainside by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone, but the boat was already a considerable distance from land, buffeted by waves because of the wind that was against it. During the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went out to them, walking on the lake. When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said, and cried out in fear. But Jesus immediately said to them, Take courage, it is I. Don't be afraid. Lord, if it's you, Peter replied, tell me to come to you on the water. Come, he said. Then Peter got down out of the boat, walked on the water, and came towards Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid and began to sink. Cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. You of little faith, he said, why did you doubt? And when they climbed into the boat, the wind died down. There, then those who were in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. This is the Word of God for the people of God. Thanks. Well, I would like to start the same way I start every sermon at my other church, and that is by saying it is truly a blessing to be with you on this beautiful Sunday. Sometimes we forget that every day is, in fact, a gift. When I was a child, not really a child, in junior high to be exact, about 8th grade, me being as stubborn and rebellious as could be, one of my teachers said, for this assignment, I want you to find a research topic and I want you to inform your class of something they do not know. Now, me being given this opportunity to make as much possible with it, I decided that I was going to do a study on what answer was the best to guess on if you didn't know the answer to a question. Now, of course, we're talking about multiple choice questions. So you have four to choose from, maybe five if the teacher really wants to throw you into a loop. So I did a study, and I found out from Harvard, this is a real thing, that the best letter to guess, if you do not know anything about, was the letter C. I had felt God truly touch me. <laughs> and I felt like I had opened up the best book in the world. Now, in the humor that God displays, I found out very soon that teachers caught on to this too. Because <laughs> the answer was not always C. And many times, if I guessed, I got it wrong, which then made me study more. And in the long run, the teacher won. I had lost the battle. But the letter C, the answer C, goes so much farther than that. A lot of times, it would bring turmoil to me. Too many choices. I used to be a huge fan of the true and false questions because I'm optimistic. So the way I saw that was I had 50% chance of getting that bad boy right. <laughs> but the problem was I also had a 50% chance of getting it wrong. But in prayer, that is how everything is answered. Yes or no, our human Ideas grasp prayer as I will pray to God asking for something and God will then stand up and say yes or no. But that is not always 
the answer. The answer to prayer is not just as simple as yes or no, but there is a third answer, not yet. Now this third answer is significantly harder for us as humans to deal with. If you're anything like me and my generation, you want things done as soon as humanly possible. If I am hungry, I put a pack of ramen noodles in the microwave, I wait three minutes, and I have a feast. Until you go through your four years of college, and then that feast becomes... Eh. But the best meals ever are always those ones that your mother cooks for you at home. I used to remember that that was the bargaining chip that my mom used to use. Well, son, if you come home this weekend, you can have a wonderful meal. And those meals were so much better than the three-minute ramen noodles, but they took so much longer. I would sit and wait, which never was an issue because I would talk, normally get in trouble somehow, and have a wonderful conversation of explaining my actions. But that food was amazing. It was worth the wait. But that's extremely hard for us in our prayer lives. And I think the reason why that is, is just like Peter, sometimes we forget that faith in prayer is the foundation of prayer. If you do not have faith in what you are praying for, then it falls apart. It's extremely easy to get hooked in thinking that God will say yes or no right away. I prayed to God that he would have divine intervention on Pastor Matt and Pastor Cheryl and that the internship program would become longer than a year. But while having this prayer, I was off on the side praying to God, saying, God, I have way too much on my plate. You have to free something up. And then the battle between God and Cody began. God answered my prayer. He told Matt and Cheryl, stick to what you have planned. And he answered me by saying, Cody, here is one less thing for you to carry. But I was not happy with that because I did not have the faith in the prayer that I was praying. See, I wasn't really praying to God saying, give me something less on my plate. I was saying, God, take away the one thing I don't want and give me everything else that I do. 2 Corinthians says, walk by faith, not by sight. I wanted to see the path. I didn't want to wait on God's faith. One of my dear mentors Richard Minninger, who's the religion professor at Ottawa, used to say this beautiful thing that explained faith so much to me. And he said, if you go and pray to God about rain and do not carry an umbrella, then you are not being faithful. How often do we pray for rain and not take an umbrella with us? How often do we pray for things and not have the faith? We see in the book of Matthew, Peter says, God, if you are really God and not a ghost, let me walk on the water. And Jesus being Jesus says, come on, all you had to do was ask. She's like, come to me. And Peter gets out of the boat and starts walking on the water. And he's actually doing it for a second. And then the thought process starts coming in. He sees the wind. He sees the waves. And if you've read the story right before that, he might be thinking to himself, I knew I should have only eaten two fish and not three. <laughs> and he starts to sink and cries out, Jesus, save me. And Jesus reaches out and says, You of little faith, why did you doubt? See, Peter prayed. Peter said, Jesus, let me come to you. Jesus said, come. And because Peter didn't have that faith, he started to sink. And because God is amazing, he picked him up. 
I don't know about you, but that sounds like every prayer I've prayed in the last 25 years. It is extremely hard for us as human beings to give that control away. It is extremely hard for us as human beings to say, God, show me the path, but I want to see the whole thing. One of my great, great, great mentors who I've never met but learned so much from is Martin Luther King Jr. And he has this beautifully eloquent faith statement. He says, faith is taking the first step even when you don't see the whole staircase. That is just amazing. Because that is how our journey with God is. Sometimes God doesn't tell us what the whole path looks like, but he says, Cody, you need to be able to take the first step. Peter, take the first step. Come out on the water and you will be okay. We must be willing to take the first step. But it's not always that easy. Last week on one of my glorious, glorious days off, which I do not see very often, I watched a movie called The Preacher's Wife. It's got Denzel Washington in it, which is why I watched it, because Denzel Washington is amazing. That is a personal statement, not word of God. Just (laughs) throwing that out. But in this movie, Denzel Washington plays an angel and comes down and helps this pastor who has so much on his shoulders, he just feels like his ministry is collapsing. And the beautiful part of this movie is that for the first 30 minutes that Denzel Washington, Dudley is his name, that Dudley the angel is on earth, he comes up to the pastor and just throws it out there. Hey, I'm Dudley. I'm an angel from God. I'm here to answer your prayer. And like any sensible person, Pastor Biggs says, Okay, sir, you're kind of crazy. There's no way in the world you are an angel. And Pastor Biggs shows that he does not have the faith of what he's praying for. He prayed for rain, but didn't carry his umbrella. He prayed for God to help, and when God sent the angel, he doubted. He walked on the water, got terrified, and started to sink. Now, one of my favorite characters in this movie is actually the pastor's son, Jeremiah. His sweet little boy says some of the funniest and more realistic things in this movie. And he has this beautiful quote that says, just because you can't see the air doesn't keep you from breathing, and just because you can't see God, it doesn't keep you from believing. That is faith. Faith in the fact that even though we don't see a physical presence of God, we see God working in our lives constantly. We see God But it's so much more than just seeing God. We must have the faith to take the step. We must have the faith to take the step. Whether you see the next stair and the staircase. We must have the faith to, like in Romans, understand that our understanding does not make sense and is not enough but God's understanding is. That even though I can only see three feet in front of me, like most of your drives to the church today, that that road is still safe. That the path that God is putting you on is safe. That whatever God has in store for you is safe, is right, is an abundance of joy, hope, love, One of my favorite parts of that passage in Romans is it goes through this umbrella effect, basically. You know, pray for God, even if things are going really crappy. Because when things go crappy, you build character. And once you build character, you build faith. And once you build faith, you get hope. Faith 
is the foundation of everything that it means to be a Christian. Because being a Christian, especially in the times of Jesus, did not make sense. It was not normal, but it was right. We must, must learn to remember that when we pray to God, that sometimes the answer is C. We must understand and know that even if it's not yes or no, we are still in good hands. And we must keep faith in knowing that even if you can't see the finish line, that it is still there. Moses didn't see the finish line for 40 years, but he kept walking. Peter kept walking. We must keep walking. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Lord, we come to you today extremely thankful Extremely thankful for all that you give us. Extremely thankful that no matter how chaotic life is, that we can still come to you with prayer and praises. Thankful for the relationship that you build with us, with the hope and the love. But most importantly, thankful for the faith that you bring us. I just ask that you be with us and help us remember the words of the book of Hebrew. That faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. Understanding that all of our hopes and dreams, you have us secure. Understanding that if we don't get our way, that is perfectly fine because yours is better. Understanding and knowing that we must make the first step, even if we can't see the path or the staircase that is ahead of us. And understanding that even when we are at our lowest times, that you are still there picking us up and reminding us that we must be faithful in you because you are the provider you are the one that provides salvation. You are the one that came down and died for each and every one of us. A death that you did not deserve. But because you love us, and because you have faith in us, you did it for us. It is all of these things that we ask in your glorious and precious name. Amen.